Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Nice to see you. It is... Okay, this is really getting weird now. Um, today is June 1st. Well, you know, they say um, that when you're, when you're a kid, every day feels like a year. You're having so much fun, right? And then when you get older, where the heck does the time go? Seems like, what was I saying? When you're a kid, every day feels like a year. And when you're old, every year feels like a day. Like what in the heck happened to the first half of the year? Jeez, yeah. Louise. It's, oh, by the way, it's the John Lemon ESXS Mastermind. I'm your guy, Glenn Henderson. It's Wednesday, the 1st of June. New month, new goals, new things to shoot for, new stuff to work on. And we are glad to see you. Uh, hey, we've got a few things today. Uh, some things, you know, one thing is off. Um, it's the hospitality suite after us. And then uh, Books for Britain with our good friend Mandy Anderson at 3.15 Eastern Time, 8.15 UK Time, and I'm sorry to say, well, actually, to be, I think it would be more accurate to tell you that I'm happy to say that there will be no networking magic tonight because my dear wife Paula is, as we speak, winging her way back to Houston from a two-week vaca two vacation with mother, my mother-in-law, that's how I tell them apart. My mother, Eleanor Henderson, is mama. And Jackie Wigley, being English, of course, she certainly appreciates being referred to as mother, as you can imagine. So it's nice. So anyway, Paula is on her way back. Uh, she should be landing at about 7 o'clock this evening. The uh, champagne is chilled and ready to go, and you will not be seeing me tonight. So, there's that. Gail, nice to see you. Have you changed your hair? Have you had a little trim or a new I style? Have, yeah. Well, see, am I a good husband or what? <laughs> oh, yes, you I are. I notice things, <laughs> you know, these things. And Kat Martin is here. Kat and her cat, who no doubt will be putting in an appearance. <laughs> and then there is Daisy, the faithful Daisy come in to dropping in to see us from the job and you know we it, I'll tell you um, anybody in my view anyone who is that it's my that is the uh, text tone from my phone let me turn that off uh, anybody um, who is working on some addition an, an additional project a side hustle building a business from home in addition to their job has my respect particularly moms wives mothers ladies staying at home who also have a job and who are also building a business or running a side hustle or something i i i i happen to believe that full time well that mothers who have a job who who are who work you know in a situation outside the home have let's see at least four full time jobs at least four wife mother employee or manager at the job and entrepreneur I ain't got what it takes I'll tell you that right now <laughs> so as we say in the neighborhood as used to be said in the neighborhood mad respect to all moms who are also building a business so there's that um, I was going to say something um, as a matter of fact I have just now decided in this moment that we shall have two topics today is that alright with you okay then first topic First thing we're going to chat about has to do with a conversation that I had just this morning with Edward. Good to see you, my friend. Conversation that I had just this morning with a friend of mine, 
uh, and someone that I've been coaching, you know, working with, uh, that sort of relates to and also relates to a chapter from Ye Old Book. But before I get into any of that, Catherine noticed, as soon as I turned my camera on, that she says, hey, you're in a new location. Well, as a matter of fact, here's what we've done. Um, the side, we've, I, I made a decision to bring my external office. Remember, I had that external office in the co-working facility across the way, like basically around the corner from the house. Um, we've decided that we actually have the space here in the house to bring the office back in. <clears throat> and since I also have an have office space at the headquarters of our smoker pit company, why do I need to keep paying 1300 bucks a month for an office that I'm not using all that much? So bring it on back. Everything's in. I'm not turning the camera around. No, you don't get to see the wreckage of having moved everything in. Uh, but yes, I've got all the stuff here and I'll be rearranging and, and all that sorts of thing. Um, so there's that. Uh, I think as time goes by, you'll begin to see some decorations and tchotchkes and stuff on the walls here, which should be fun for all. And um, for now, I'm kind of getting used to being on the ground floor right over here, just outside the, uh, the doors, the, the glass doors is our downstairs patio, which who knows? We may yet have a broadcast from the patio one of these days. How interesting would that be? It's not really interesting. The patio's not that big. But, you know, it's outdoors. and Outdoors is always nice. Outdoors is always a good idea. So there's that. Um, two topics, as I said. Um, I was, as you might imagine, reviewing... An episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, reviewing, as I say, because I've seen virtually all of the episodes of The Next Generation each several times, at least. Uh, well, you know, it's research. I'm studying. I'm, you know, preparing, taking notes for chapters in the new book and so forth and and lessons modules for the upcoming training course and you know i have to be i have to keep up i have to keep abreast of the storylines and so forth and uh what the episode that i picked today had to do with oh let's see which is it chapter seven in the book and i love i actually enjoy talking about this so chapter seven there it is okay so you've screwed up Big time. Now what? Um, it has to do, uh, by way of review, it has to do with the case of our friend Ensign Sito Jaxa. Who in the heck is Ensign Sito Jaxa? She's a young Bajoran woman. Another race. It's a member of the Federation. Anyway, she's a Bajoran woman who was... Uh, Swept up in a scandal, as you call, back at Starfleet Academy. Terrible training accident. There was a, a daredevil aerial flying stunt being attempted by some of the cadets. There was a terrible accident. A cadet lost his life. And our, our ensign, Sito, participated in a cover-up of the events surrounding that accident. Was, was humiliated, disgraced demoted, somehow managed to make it all the way through her academy training, graduated, and is now posted to the Enterprise. Here's the thing that the whole, now you've screwed up, the events that take place on board the Enterprise concern Ensign Sito's past record and someone on board holding it against her what had happened three years ago and making it an issue in regards to the possibility of her promotion and advancement aboard ship and all of that. Um, and Sancito quite passionately makes her case that she should not be judged 
based on something that happened three years before. She says, if you're going to, my, my work here has been exemplary. If you're going to judge me, judge me for what I am now, which sounds like a fairly reasonable case to make, in my opinion. And so it, 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 that brought me in mind of, put me in mind of the conversation I'd had with someone this morning who was saying, this, this person that I've been coaching and working with sent me a text and uh, without revealing any confidences, let's see, what, um, what was the message? The message said, ah, it says, figured out my success problem is I am competitive by comparing myself to others. This person is currently, um, my friend is currently reading The Science of Getting Rich for the first time. We know about that book, don't we? That was the very first book, as I recall. The very first, was, was, was it the first book that we covered in the book club here in the uh, Mastermind Book Study? It was one of the early books. She says, anyway, it clicks. I need to stop comparing myself to others if I truly believe that I'm unique in how I do the work I do. So it, it, it's, it was like this. How does that relate? How does that connect to chapter seven? Well, something clicked in my head that, okay, Ensign Cito, who, by the way, was speaking with Captain Picard when she said, if you're going to judge me, judge me based on what I am now. Mm. And Captain Picard did and judged her quite favorably, in fact, for what she was then, not based on three years ago. He said something truly, truly kind a um, li little bit later in that discussion because he had previously, the captain had previously said to Sito, frankly, I don't know how you made it on board the Enterprise. Like, like as if she didn't even deserve to be there. Uh, then later on in the second conversation, he says, and Ensign, I, I do know how you made it on board the Enterprise. He said, I asked for you. I wanted to make sure that you got a fair chance to redeem yourself. Now that's nice. And that's my book, That's Real Leadership. Not holding someone's past against them. Giving someone, regardless of their past, the opportunity to move forward and prove and demonstrate who they are now. By the way, this reminds me, it's reminded me of a question. Captain, the character of Captain Picard demonstrated and demonstrates great leadership skills, leadership qualities. One of them being this, the ability or the choice to give everyone aboard his ship the benefit of the doubt in working with them, in leading them, and not holding their past against them. Which reminds me of a question. Do you recall a time, does any of us recall a time when our fearless leader, Reverend John Lavenia, has ever brought up anyone's past or mentioned the past actions or past behavior of anyone in the mastermind in anything other than a favorable light? That's leadership. That just threw that in from the uh, from the department of I'm just saying. So how does this relate? Judge me for what I am now. And what I said to my friend in the text, my re reply to her text was to remind her of something that 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 she and I had discussed before, and I that I think we have discussed here in the mastermind, which is the only person. The only person that you should ever compare yourself to, the only person that any of us should ever compare ourselves to, and there is such a person, that person is the person you were yesterday. What did I do yesterday? 
How did yesterday go? So what was my plan for yesterday when I started the day? Oh, by the way, you did have a plan for yesterday, right? <laughs> and you did at least make an attempt to e execute on that plan from yesterday. Yes. If not, well, that's another conversation we may need to have. Did I execute on my plan? Did I at least make an attempt on achieving what I set out to do yesterday? How did it go? What did I do right? What did I do yesterday that needs to be done better? What did I do yesterday that I don't, probably don't need to do anymore? What worked really well yesterday that I probably ought to do a whole lot more of? You see where I'm going? Plan, do, review. Of yesterday. And now, today... 1% improvement on what I did yesterday. I saw a statistic in an article yesterday that said that based on probabilities and so forth, if you and I were to improve, make a 1% improvement in something that we do, doesn't really matter what, if we were to make a 1% improvement in that activity, we could achieve something like a 3,700% improvement in our performance over the course of a year. Um, do you think you could live with making 3,700% more money next year than you did this year? 3,700% more money than I made last year? Yeah, you know, I think that would go a long way toward paying off my Visa card. Yeah. <laughs> so, we compare ourselves to the self, the Glenn that I was yesterday. Am I doing better than that guy? Cool. No one else's opinion matters. As the saying goes, I used to worry what other people thought about me till one day I tried to pay my bills with their opinions. Which is good. I, 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 yeah, I appreciate that. And um, so that's the thought that I that I was having today about comparisons and who 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 gets to who gets to judge me. Uh, only person who gets to judge me is me from yesterday, and even he doesn't get to judge me because I'm going to do better than him anyway. What do you think? What's on your mind about this whole comparison thing and uh, and uh, doing just that much better than yesterday? I should love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, and so so that's yeah, Gail. How do you do, ma'am? Hi. Um. <coughs> excuse me. It's hard to not compare yourself with others. Mm. And I'm always telling my son, Stefan, not to do that. And because he's, he, he's very concerned that his sisters are, have done better than he has in life. Mm. And that all these different things are happening. And um, he just keeps on comparing himself mm. and I've told him not to do that but it's it's very hard to accept that and to and to uh, not do it um I don't know if I'm if I'm crazy or if I'm just like making this up in my head have I just made a connection in my head that you're gonna say well Glenn you're just figuring this out now your son Stefan is it the same Stefan Bauman who's appeared here in the mastermind? Yes. He's your son? Yes. Okay. How in the heck did I not know this? <laughs> I don't know. How did, how did this not occur to me before? <laughs> Holy Probably because he doesn't look my, like me. He looks like uh, dad. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. A fine young man. <laughs> your son. Yes, he no. is. 
It's an excellent point you make. Yeah, it can't. I'm, it can be difficult, really difficult, really challenging for us to not compare ourselves. To, I wonder why that is. What do you think? What What is it? I mean, this and this is a question. No, I'm not just singling you out. Yeah, this is a question that I'm putting before the committee now. Um, why is it that we have such a hard time not comparing ourselves to others? What do you think it is? Maybe it's because as you're growing up, you've been told, oh, you're not as good, or why can't you be like such and <sighs> such? You know, that has an effect on you. I've been told that it, as part of like parenting skills or something, I've been told that one of the worst things a parent can say to a child is, why can't you be like your brother? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just... <sighs> Parents, we we parents sometimes say things that we later wish we could take back, right? We sometimes ring bells that we wish we could unring. Um, that seems to me that sort of question would just completely, in the mind of a child, would almost completely invalidate everything that particular child is capable of doing, mm -hmm. and say it, it sort of implying to the child, well, if you're not like your brother, then you're not good enough. Yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah, and I also, I think you're right about that. Uh, what we're told in childhood, in our early years, I've always uh, been advised, an old mentor used to say to me, whenever someone says something self-defeating or says something to put themselves down or says something that reflects a negative image of themselves, a negative self-perception, the question to ask them is, one question to ask them is, who told you that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who told you that? And sometimes by digging and drilling a little deeper into who told you that, we can go all the way back to that time when I was seven, seven years old and my mom said, or yeah. words to that effect. Well, I know in my son's case, it was at school. Mm. He had some of the same teachers as my two daughters, ah. and they were all on the top of their class and in honors and all that sort of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and uh, then when he went to the Culinary Institute of America, Ooh. where my husband was a professor until he died, mm -hmm. everybody expected him to be the same type of person as my husband, Following. have the same cooking skills, the same knowledge, and they couldn't believe that this could be Professor Bowman's son, you know, so he lived wow. through all of that. Wow. Yeah. A lot of huh. pressure. How is Stephen, by the, how is Stefan, by the way? He's doing okay right now. He's working at a, a Buddhist monastery. Mm. He does a combination of um, cooking for them, which he's enjoying because he's mm -hmm. learning a lot about vegan cooking ah. and um, working outdoors, uh, building things building walkways and planting and he prefers the outdoor stuff mm -hmm. he um really enjoys that but you know where he is he there's hardly any um reception yes so he's not on here i think he's still a member of this but um, uh, he just can't reception is an yeah. issue mm -hmm. even when we call half the time we text because mm -hmm. the call keeps getting dropped. Wow. He has set a really, he has set himself a really interesting journey. Mm -hmm. He's going to have quite a story to tell at some point. Yeah. That's really interesting. A Buddhist monastery. Who? I mean, who saw that coming? <laughs> Wow. All right, then. Well, listen, next time you text him, tell him we said hello, and we're I thinking will. of him. I will. Absolutely. That is interesting. Um, so, you know, it's funny. Um, when I was, um, when I was uh, doing my research this morning, reviewing my Trek episode, I found myself getting swept up, getting caught up emotionally in this story just like all the dozen or so times that I've seen this episode before. 
I think it's because, uh, partly, at least partly, because I can relate to that scenario, to being in that situation. I've, I've jacked it up. Now what do I do? Well, one thing, you keep working, right? And you keep training, you keep studying, you keep seeking to improve yourself and create, as Encinito did, create a scenario where there is a, a BS in your life and a CS, a, 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 a BS in your life and a PS in your life. That is a before screw up and <laughs> post screw up. <laughs> and if I have learned the lesson that was presented to me by way of the screw up, then the PS portion but ought to look pretty darn different from the BS, from the before screw up, because I've learned the lesson, I've, I've applied what I've learned, and now I'm doing that thing better than I did before. So screw ups are, as we have said before, failure is not an obstacle on the road. Failure is not an obstacle on the road to success. Failure is the road to success. That's pretty profound. Somebody should be writing this down. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, my friends, um, yeah, I, uh, I need to get some organizing done here. Uh, and don't, don't tell anybody, but there's a couple of dishes in the sink. Which I did, but hey, listen, I'm not worried about it. This is why God created dishwashers. So, so we'll get all that. Get a, got a, I've got a couple of things that I need to get done and all of that. And by the way, uh, our our fearless leader John sends his greetings. He had he was unable to join us today. Some pressing business matters to attend to, but he shall see us next time. Thank you, Cat. Whoa, she jumped off there right quick. I couldn't even give her my. Vulcan salute. But thank you all so much for joining me. Remember, Hospitality Suite right after this. Books for Britain at 8.15 UK time, 3.15 Eastern time. And no networking magic tonight. It's a welcome home, Paula, kind of an evening. All righty then, my friends. Make it a fabulous day. And we'll see you again later on. Bye for now.